Well, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I have 12 noon on my clock, so um, just want to welcome everybody. My name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital, and I'm one of the partners in this new knowledge series, along with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, the Virginia Highlands Small Business Incubator, and the Town of Abington. Um, if you're not familiar with who Virginia Community Capital is, we are a, um, a community development financial institution providing lending, uh, investing, and community services uh, in Virginia and in other uh, states as well. And I work in our community innovation program. I've had the pleasure of working on this program for the past, uh, we're going on 11 years that we've been offering this um, uh, new knowledge professional development series. Um, today's session is being recorded for training and education purposes, and we will be uh, uh, posting that um, after the event on our new knowledge YouTube channel, where you can find over 200 workshops that we have been doing uh, and posting since 2015 that we actually video recorded them. And you'll also find it on the Virginia Highlands Small Business Incubators Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com forward slash uh, VHSB, uh, SBI, and you'll find that. Um, we also have, if you'll notice, we have everyone, um, your mics muted and your uh, video off, and that is our way of keeping the webinar flowing. However, we do want, this is a learning opportunity, and if you have a question for our presenter, if you will please post those in the Q&A section. Um, after um, uh, the, the session, we will take uh, questions, and um, it's all about helping you to, to learn more skills and using Google. Uh, as always, we are delighted to have Courtney uh, Stringer. She is the Grow with Google coach, and she has been leading this series. I think today marks our halfway point of this 10-session um, program, and um, we are delighted to have Courtney. If you if this is your first time uh, joining in one of our sessions, uh, Courtney has been working in economic and community uh, development for a number of years here in Southwest Virginia and is well known. And we are delighted to have her lead our session today. So, uh, Courtney, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Sandy, and to the new knowledge team. You all have been so gracious to host us, and we appreciate that. And I'm going to go off screen so you all can see the full screen. Give me just a second. Okay. Are you all good? Can you see everything, Sandy, good? You're good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So welcome to today's Grow with Google workshop. As Sandy said, my name is Courtney Stringer, and I'm your Virginia um, Digital Google Coach. And I'm so happy to be here with you today. We have a partnership between Main Street America and the Grow with Google program, and they selected downtown Withville um, as a location. And so that's how we're able to bring this to you today. So what is Grow with Google? Grow with Google helps people across the United States grow their skills, careers, and business by offering free tools, training, and events. Most brick and mortar businesses had to pivot during the pandemic and Main Street America conducted a survey to see how they could help small businesses and found that businesses needed digital tools in order to even survive during the pandemic. It was launched in 2017, assisted over 8 million Americans to date and a network of 8,500 partners. The target audiences for the trainings are small business owners, veterans and military families, job seekers, students, educators, and startups and developers. As I said, Grow with Google selected 10 states that had a partnership with Main Street America. And looking at this map, of course, we're the yellow pen, but you can see what an honor it is to be selected to receive these free training tools. The other states include Pennsylvania, Michigan, Iowa, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Oregon. So why Virginia? Google is really invested in Virginia and Downtown Whiffle is a leading organization within the Main Street Network. We have wonderful um, team leaders there at that site, Todd and Charlie, and we're also located right off of I-81. So it's easy to get um, to the middle or other side of the state and also down in far southwest Virginia. Training delivery options. We can host virtual trainings like we're doing today. 
we can offer in-person classroom settings, and those are usually about an hour, and then one-on-one in-person or virtual trainings. I've offered a number of these um, for one-off questions. If there's something that you hear today that um, you don't completely understand or that you would like more information on that, you can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to schedule that time with you. All of the trainings we offer are free and we're not going to try to sell you anything. So if you happen to receive a call from someone trying to sell you something related to Google, it's definitely not from us. So just be um, cautious when taking those calls. And what do we need from each of you? We want you to spread the word. Um, that we offer these free workshops for small businesses and um, enhancing their digital skills. Share our contact information, contact us to schedule a workshop, and then give us feedback of other um, workshops that would be beneficial for your business. And we can share that with Google and Main Street America. So our actual um, training that we're doing today, Sell Online with e-commerce tools. As I said, I'm your Virginia Google digital coach, and I'm so appreciative that you're with us today. And I'm actually zooming in from Myrtle Beach, um, South Carolina today. So the background I had was not realistic, but it is where I'm at. It's at the beach. <laughs> so our agenda in today's workshop, I'll explain why it's critical for retailers to sell online. I'll start by talking about two Google products, a business profile and a Google Merchant Center. After that, I'll introduce an e-commerce tool, Shopify, and I'll close the workshop with a quick recap and more resources. So why sell online? Every day, hundreds of millions of people turn to Google to find, discover, and shop. This is not limited to Google search. People discover products when they browse Google's news feeds, watch YouTube videos, and check their Gmail. Research shows that online shopping is on the rise. In fact, shoppers go online first in 60% of shopping occasions. But online shopping drives visits to the store as well. A global survey found that 45% of shoppers buy online and then pick up in store. This has become even more the case since the pandemic. Retailers need to show their products online because it drives sales. 58% of global purchases were promoted by something that the shopper saw online. And people want to know what to expect before they go into the business physical location. 46% of shoppers confirm inventory online before visiting a store because no one wants to go to the store just to find out the item you wanted to purchase is not available. So the takeaway, you all need to get your products online, even if the sales may happen offline. Where your products can be shown on Google, did you know that the average online shopping journey has over 140 touch points? Each touch point influences what people buy and where they buy it from. This slide lists some of the touch points on Google and where U.S.-based customer interactions can happen. They include Google search and images, a business profile, the shopping tab, shopping ads, and export. Um, experimental places like Google Lens. So how do you do it? How do you get your products to appear on Google? For anyone who isn't familiar with a free Google business profile, here's a quick overview. A business profile helps your business stand out on Google search and maps. It's available for businesses that make in-person contact with customers, either at a physical store or in a specified service area. That would be your plumbers, your electricians, um, masonry, any of those that you um, ask for a service and they come to your home, they're able to put up a radius for the um, amount of area that they serve. So that would show up on uh, Google search and maps as well. On this slide, you'll see the business profile for a retailer called the Spice House. It includes details about their Chicago store, such as address, phone number, description, et cetera. This slide also highlights a detail that appears in their business profile, which is products. In this example, the featured product is Essential Spice Collection. You can see a um, product photo, name, and price range. By clicking on the product, it reveals even more details. Once you create and claim your business profile, you're able to add your products. 
I'll show you how in the next few slides. Before you can use many of Google's products and services, you need to be signed into your Google account. The Google account's free. If you have a Gmail address already, you all can go ahead and sign in. I'll give you a second to do that. And make sure if you already have a business profile that you sign into the um, account that your business profile is already on. So the same email address. And if your business or employer uses Google Workspace, you may have an email address that doesn't have a .gmail address, but it's still a Google account. You would just need to check with your organization to see if you're using Google Workspace. The animation on the slide shows the Google homepage where you can click on the sign in button at the top right corner. And that opens a window where you can sign into your Google account by typing in your email or phone number. For today's workshop, I'm assuming that you're already signed into Google and that you've already created and verified your business profile. If you haven't done that yet, you can go to google.com backslash business to get started. And we will be sharing these slides with you all and a handout as well. Um, Sandy will do a follow-up email after the session. So you'll have all these um, tools to use if you need to refer back to them. The dashboard is pictured on the left navigation and there's a link labeled products. Click that to access the product editor. Then you'll follow a few steps. Upload a product photo, enter the product name, and create or choose a category. And it shows you there on the screen that some of those are optional. So you have the option to include a price, or price range, a description, and a button that can link to a product details page on your website. On this, you'll need to click save. Many of Google's products do not does not require you to click save, but this one does, so make sure you click save. And allow a few minutes for your newly added products to show online. In the meantime, you can preview how your product will appear to customers by clicking see it on Google. You can click on a product to make changes or delete at any time. So this is what the product looks like when you click on it from business profile in Google. This slide shows that you can see all the product information, including a button with the call to action, which is learn more. Clicking this button sends you to the product page on the Spice House's website. There's no charge to add these products and clicks from interested buyers on the products are free too. That's how simple it is for you to add products to your business profile. And even better that they're free. Retailers use Merchant Center to make their store and product information available to shoppers across Google. Google Merchant Center is free and you don't need to advertise to add your products. However, if you do want to advertise and show shopping ads on Google, you have to set up your Merchant Center account first, and then the ads do cost money. So you would have to select your daily um, amount. And we actually covered that in the last um, new knowledge session. So if you're interested in learning more about ads, you can go back to the um, YouTube link and look at that as well. So what is Google Merchant Center? Merchant Center is a free tool that helps you upload your store and product data to Google and make it available for Google Shopping, Shopping Ads, and other services. An image shows the Merchant Center homepage where you can click a button to get started. You will add your products in one place, which is Merchant Center. Then they're eligible to appear in multiple places across Google. Let's take a look at a few places where you might see them. Google search results. First, products and additional product information may appear here. This slide shows a series of product images with information beneath at the top of the Google search results page. These are shopping ads. Below these ads are Google's organic search results. The organic search results typically include basic information, a title, a description, and a link but some results show more. This extra information is called a rich snippet, and a snippet can be really helpful to make a product stand out. This slide shows the Spice House's ground fenugreek seeds in the search results. 
It's jazzed up with extra info like a star rating, which is called a review snippet. It also includes product details like price and availability of the seeds. How can you help Google add that extra information to your products when they appear in Google search results? First, you should talk to your website developer about adding structured data markup to your website. In a nutshell, structured data is a labeling system added to your web pages. The labels help Google and other web platforms automatically understand your site and pull information like the product data from the HTML. This is an example of one attribute from Merchant Center. The product's availability is displayed for free in organic search results. You can see that the ground fenugreek seeds are in stock. An added bonus, if you have structured data on your website, it can be used automatically to update products in Merchant Center. We could spend the rest of this workshop talking about technical details, but we won't. However, if you want to work on improving how your product appears in Google organic search results, you should set up Merchant Center and talk to your web developer about adding structured data to your website. Next place that um, your products can appear is in the shopping tab. Again, for free in the shopping tab for U.S. searches. Visit google.com, do a search, and then click shopping at the top to see results. Or you can start by visiting shopping.google.com. So let's take just a second and you go to either the shopping.google.com or go into um, a regular search. And if you want, search for a product that you have um, in your store and see what comes up in your organic search results. The shopping results page displays a product image and information highlights. Clicking on the product will show more details. Next place your product can appear is on Google Images. Visit google.com, do a search, and then click Images. So if you're already in your search, along the top, you can see where Images is there highlighted. So you can just go ahead and click Images. You can tell that the image in the results is connected to a product for sale if it has a product label that's called a product annotation. The label indicates that you can click the product to get more information. So again, let's try it. I recommend doing a search on the types of products you sell to see what shows up in Google or the Google search results. The screenshot on the slide shows the image of the results for the Spice House Fenugreek. There are rows of images and some have a label that says product. One example is highlighted for you to reference. So I'll give you just a second to try that one and see what the differences are between um, the shopping tab, which is what you saw before here, and then the images tab that you're currently searching on. And last but not least, Merchant Center helps retailers advertise their products on Google. You've probably seen shopping ads. They're more than a text, and they incorporate a product photo, title, price, store name, and more. Shopping campaigns can be used to promote online and local inventory. Local inventory ads help nearby shoppers know what you have in stock, potentially driving more sales to your physical store. In order to run these types of ads, you first need that Google uh, Merchant Center account. The screenshot on the screen shows search results for buy fenugreek in the Spice House, which displays product photos, the store, and price. So the basic process is create the Merchant Center account, add your products, connect your um, Merchant Center account to Google Ads, and then you can create shopping campaigns to advertise your products on Google. Here's a high-level overview of how Merchant Center works. You'll create the free account, upload the products, and then you'll be able to see them on those um, locations that we just went over on Google. 
Merchant Center has an online setup guide available, and you can see that link below. Again, this will be in your um, information that Sandy emails out after the session today. Let's start by visiting g.co backslash Merchant Center. Make sure you're signed into Google. And if you're already using an account for your business to access services like Google Ads, make sure it's the same account that you're signed into. And the image on the screen shows the Merchant Center homepage with the heading, list your products for free on Google. Next, you'll enter information about your business, including the name. So make sure it's what um, the potential buyers would see when they come to your store. Maybe not your exact name that shows up on your tax information. The country where your headquarters is located or where your business is registered. And your time zone, which is used for reporting. The image on this slide shows a box titled, Enter Your Business Information with the Spice House's information filled in for business name, country, and time zone. Now you select the checkout options that apply to your business. Merchant Center lists three options. Selecting on your website means that the customers can see your products on Google, but they'll go to your website to buy it. And if you select at your local store, customers can see your products on Google, but then are directed to visit your local store to purchase them. You can change these checkout options in your account at any time. This image shows the relevant Merchant Center page with the question, where do you want your customers to check out at the top? The options we just discussed are displayed with checkboxes. Next, you can link Merchant Center to third-party platforms. This can simply be the setup process for your Merchant Center account. Shopify is an option, and we'll talk about how that platform integrates with Merchant Center in just a bit. The image on the screen shows the relevant Merchant Center page with the question, what other tools do you use at the top? Shopify and PayPal are displayed as options with checkboxes. Next, there's the question, would you like to sign up for emails about Google Merchant Center? Your options are update with tips and best practices and invitations to test new formats. So you can fill that part up and then we'll move on. This is the Merchant Center overview page. If you're just setting up Merchant Center, prompts are displayed at the top to help you complete setup. The left navigation also includes products, which links to the area where you can add and manage products, performance, where you can view reports, and growth, where you can access suggestions for improving product visibility and driving more sales. In the sidebar, overview is highlighted. That displays four boxes on the page, each with graphs. They are feed uploads, shopping ads, dynamic remarketing, and performance. And the performance, remember, is paid. If you selected the checkout options on your website and or at your local store, you must verify your website before your products can appear on Google. There are three ways to do that. You can use Google Analytics or Tag Manager or add an HTML file to your website. If you use Shopify for your e-commerce store, the website is automatically verified when it's connected to Merchant Center. Google Merchant Center's business information page is displayed here. In the top navigation, website is highlighted. That displays a page that prompts you to verify your business via one of the options we discussed. Now that Merchant Center is set up, the next step is to add your products. Start by clicking products on the left navigation, which is highlighted on the screenshot for you. You can then click the button to add individual products, multiple products or a combination of both.
When you add an individual product, you will enter information about it in Merchant Center. Some fields like title, link, and price are required. There are a lot of optional fields, including variants. For example, if you sell products with multiple sizes and colors, you can include the variants with the product rather than create a separate entry for each option. Products that are added individually must be edited individually. So remember that when you're putting those products in. You can use a combination of individual product uploads or product feeds. Product feeds make it easier to add multiple products. So let's take a quick look at that. The screenshot shows part of the add product section of the Merchant Center, a box label country of sale and destination. And this has fields for country of sale, language and destinations. A product feed is a file that contains all the information about the products you want to show on Google. The file includes information about your products called attributes. To create a product feed in Merchant Center, you'll start by entering some basic information. The screenshot shows the basic information tab in the Merchant Center with a prompt to enter country of sale and language. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, you'll give the product feed a name. This won't appear on Google, but it will give a description. So you can give it a descriptive name to where you're able to identify it in your account. So you know exactly what product that is. Then select how you want to add the products to your product feed. If you're just now getting started in Merchant Center, one of the easiest way is using Google Sheets with the template provided. This image shows the name and input method tab in the Merchant Center with a prompt to enter your primary feed name. If you select Google Sheets, Merchant Center displays two options, use a template or select another spreadsheet. You would choose the second option if you have an existing product feed that is set up to work in Merchant Center. Let's assume you're starting from scratch, so you choose the template. The screenshot shows the setup tab where you're prompted to register a Google spreadsheet by selecting generate a new Google spreadsheet from a template or select an existing Google spreadsheet. Give you a second there. This slide shows Google Sheets template before products are added. There's a link to instructions for creating your feed as well as product feed specifications. Before creating the feed, read through the instructions and specifications to make sure you're setting it up correctly. The detail on this slide highlights the columns in the spreadsheet. Each column corresponds to the product attribute. Merchant Center has specific requirements. For example, the availability attribute accepts three options, in stock, out of stock, and pre-order. This sounds a bit technical, but at the end of the day, you're simply creating a spreadsheet with the product information you want to display across Google. And remember, it may take time to set this up, but all of this is a free resource to you to be able to get your products in front of more people using the Google platform. Once the Merchant Center setup is complete, your products can appear on Google in many places, including Google search, images, shopping, shopping ads, and the ex experimental places like Google Lens, which is a new um, platform that's in testing phase now, I think still. So you'll have to go and search that when you have time pretty cool using your phone camera. So there's still an important topic we haven't addressed. How to actually sell the products on your website. Many small businesses use third-party e-commerce tools to power their online stores, and there are lots of great options available. Today, we're going to introduce one option, which is Shopify. 
You may remember that during the Merchant Center setup, there was an option to connect to Shopify. That connection means you can skip the website verification step. So let's take a look now at Shopify. Small businesses leverage the Shopify platform to grow their customer base, develop better customer relationships, grow their sales, and of course, grow their small business. First, we'll go over Shopify, what it is and why it exists. Then we'll talk about how you can easily start selling your products through Shopify, regardless of your knowledge base. The last piece we'll touch on is how to connect Shopify and Google to make sure that your products are being found. Understanding Shopify starts with understanding its mission, which is to make commerce better for everyone. Every business owner should have the best tools to compete and thrive against much bigger businesses. Shopify was founded in Canada 17 years ago and is now being used in 175 plus countries. The platform is used by 1 million merchants who collectively have generated over 155 billion in sales using Shopify. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. So obviously um, they are making commerce easier to use. During the pandemic in 2020, many business owners found themselves needing to pivot to stay afloat. A lot of the offline-only retailers turned to online sales and have come out on the other side even stronger thanks to diversifying their business. Shopify allows you to sell your physical products on your own personalized e-commerce website. Here's an example of what a Shopify site can look like from a real business, the Spice House. You may notice that the site looks super professional and easy to navigate, and the pages load quickly. Also important, the site's going to show up on Google. Shopify sites are designed to convert at the highest possible rate, meaning that it generates the most sales per visitor to your site. This animation shows what the Spice House's Shopify website looks like with best sellers, meal recipes, reviews, testimonials, food photos, and more. Once you've linked your Merchant Center account to Shopify, the products still have to be synced. In order to do that, you need to select the market or country that you will sell in and your shipping settings. This screenshot shows a pop-up box directing you to configure your product feed settings by entering your market and shipping settings. Finally, you have the option to connect your Google Ads account to get started with smart shopping campaigns. These are paid ads that help your product appear in front of shoppers on YouTube, Gmail, Google Search, and across Google. To set up a smart shopping campaign, sync your products, and set a daily budget. Google will optimize your campaign and select the best time and place to show your products to shoppers. Remember, all of the um, Google platforms that we've discussed today are free, except for Google Ads, and that allows you to set your own budget of how much you want to spend when you create an ad. So we've covered a lot of ground today. Just remember that both Google and Shopify are designed to make it as easy as possible to get started. You don't have to be good to start. You just have to start to be good. So like Sandy said, we have five other sessions that are up on YouTube, many um, that touch on some of the things we talked about today. So if this is your first time with us, you can go back and look at the Google ads. You can go back and look at the setting up your Google profile. All of those um, are on the YouTube page. So if you have any questions, um, let me cover this one more and then we'll go to questions. Sorry, Sandy. An excellent res uh, resource with, is called Grow My Store. Grow My Store is a free Google tool designed for retailers who sell online, in-store, or both. It's available at g.co backslash grow my store. As long as you have a website, it can analyze and access, can analyze and assess the customer experience. 
The report evaluates a range of factors such as product information, store details, personalization, and website performance. The tool also measures how fast your site loads and its mobile friendliness. Also, if it's secure and uses the HTTPS. We all know that if we go to a site that's slow, we're more likely to click off of it and go to one that loads a little bit faster. You can receive a personalized report plus tips for making site improvements. If you'd like to watch a three minute video tutorial, visit the Grow with Google Quick Help playlist at g.co backslash grow backslash quick help. And you can see that quick tip there in the left hand corner of the slide. Look for the video titled, How Can I Improve My Retail Website? The screenshot here shows the Grow My Store tool where you can type in your website address to get started. Now we're ready for questions. Hey, Miss Sandy. Yeah, I kept hitting, hitting it wrong. Um, I don't see anything right now in the Q&A, but I, if um, our attendees have any questions, please post those. But just while we're waiting, any questions, Courtney, uh, is there a value that Google has provided on this service that they're providing um, for users compared to other uh, providers that do similar? I have not seen an amount, Sandy, but I know um, that it's a great resource. I know I use it all the time. One of the first things I do when I'm searching mm -hmm. for a product or when I'm going to buy something for Connor is go to Google, type in the search and look at the shopping tab because it shows you all the different prices of the competitors. Let me go on screen. Hold on just a second. Let me turn my video. There we go. Um, I'll go on there to look and see what the competitors are. And then of course I go and purchase the one that's the least price because it's the same exact product. It's also good as a small business, if you're able, if you know other stores have the same products you do in your area, you can um, be competitive with your pricing. I would think for someone that is not familiar and that has not been using e-commerce, this would probably be one of the easiest ways and fastest ways that they can start exploring it. And of course, Absolutely. like you said, that uh, Google is probably the number one or is the number one uh, search engine. And to be connected on there is, to me, a no-brainer um, if you're selling something. And I think we all learned something from the pandemic is how important it is to have an e-commerce site because if people are not able to come into your shop, that inventory is going to, you're just going to have to keep dusting it off uh, mm -hmm. and uh, getting it out there. I know for me, I still, I do a lot of, most of my shopping online is just because of, of uh, convenience um, and safety and all kinds of things. So I, I do highly uh, recommend that folks look at this. I do too. And I do a lot of my shopping just because it's easier with a toddler to order online and either do the pickup as the um, session said, or have it shipped to the house just because you're not having to, you know, worry about getting him out and getting him sick as well. So exactly. Yeah. We really like that as an option. And I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, you've on the previous uh, uh, sessions, you know, there's been uh, parts of of this topic that's been addressed, and I highly recommend that folks go to our new knowledge YouTube channel. And and if you missed some of the the, the first sessions, go back and look at those. That's a great resource of other tools that you can implement as well as doing the e commerce. And, Absolutely, and I love Sandy, like you said, the e commerce. Um, is so beneficial, but for the fact that it's free and it shows up across multiple Google platforms like the YouTube and some of the other ones, to me, that is a no brainer. Exactly. We do have a question from Becca. In your experience, do you see this being valuable for a nonprofit thrift store like a Habitat store? So Becca, I'm not familiar with your store, so I don't know if you all have multiple of each item or not, I think if it would be great um, to showcase probably more so on like a Facebook page if you're getting one of each item. But if it's multiple of an item, I think you could definitely showcase it here. 
Or yeah, is it something you, that you know is a recurring item that you receive? Uh, exactly. And if you um, uh, have the ability to keep all of those items uh, on Google, on your store, that, that to me would be your biggest uh, challenge is keeping all that stuff updated because the, mm -hmm. the, the what you don't want to do is have something listed and then you sell it and somebody contacts you and what have you. So uh, I would say that if you're going to be moving forward on this, have a commitment. And if it's not, if it's just you or if you have other staff people that can help you keep that updated, I think that is key that you're that way that you are going um, to show up above other competitors. And Becca says that makes sense. Can you repeat the YouTube channel, please? It's youtube.com forward slash noon knowledge. And just go under the videos and you will see those. You can list it by um, the date it was uploaded. You can see two weeks ago what we uploaded. So it is there. And it's also uh, past sessions videos are on the uh, Virginia Highlands Small Business Incubators, excuse me, uh, Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com forward slash VHSBI and you will uh, find it there. And it will also be in your email, Becca, that Sandy sends out um, as a follow-up. Yes. I don't see any other questions. Okay. I'll um, go through the rest of the slides and Sandy, if that's okay. Okay. That's great. So our next new knowledge session is connect with customers and work remotely. And that's on October 4th, again at noon. And the following one after that is make your website work for you. And this is one that we have had to pivot just a little bit because of some changes with Google. So that one will be on October the 18th, again at noon. And please register for the um, rest of our, our upcoming sessions, even if you're unavailable during the noon session, because like I said, Sandy sends that out with a handout with step-by-step -step instructions and also um, links to her, the new knowledge page. And that way you can watch at your convenience if noon does not work for you. But you will have to pre-register so that we we'll know that you're interested yes. in it. Yeah, pre-register and that way you will receive the information. And then here is my contact information. Feel free, like I said before, to contact me with any questions you have or if you need one-on-one -on -one support. And last but not least, we definitely want to thank our amazing partners for their support on this initiative. Um, they have recognized the value of this program and partnership, how important our entrepreneurs are to our thriving small Main Streets and want to see growth within our rural communities. So we want to thank Main Street America, Downtown Withful, the Southwest Virginia Higher Education Center, UVA Wise, Virginia Community Capital, and Virginia Main Street. And that's all I've got, Miss Sandy. Uh, well, thank you, um, Courtney. I want to thank you for your time and sharing your expertise uh, with us this afternoon. I've been using YouTube for a number of years, and uh, each time I'm learning more. But what I'm seeing, there's a trend of all the ones that we've done in the in the the, the first sessions of the Grow with Google, and what's coming up. They're all interchanging. And that's the great thing of uh, utilizing Google and the tools that they offer. Also, Absolutely. want to thank the folks that joined us today for your time. And I know you all have a busy schedule and I appreciate you participating. And I hope you've learned some valuable tips that can help you going forward for your business or um, uh, nonprofit organization. As Courtney said, we hope you can join us on October the 4th for our next session. But most importantly, if these if you're finding these sessions valuable, please share it with others. Um, encourage them to uh, attend the next ones coming up, but also go back and look at the archives that we have um, uh, uh, done. And again, just wanted to put a plug. Today's session is being recorded and you'll find it. And it uh, just depends on how fast technology will allow me to upload it, but uh, probably be up on YouTube and Facebook in two to three hours. So hope you can get that. And you'll also find over probably getting close to 250 workshops that we've done in the new knowledge series from everything of how do I set up uh, QuickBooks for that we've done in a whole series, uh, cybersecurity, which you're doing things online and that's important for any business or uh, individual that's used it. But we've got all kinds of topics on there that you can find. And that's why we do this. This is to help our 
business uh, leaders uh, grow skills. And that's how we grow as professionals is uh, you don't know what you don't know. And that's what we're trying to do is to help you. Thanks again, Courtney. And thanks everybody for joining us. And I hope to see you soon and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you all.